Okay, let's do an example. I misspoke earlier when I said we are going to calculate the p-value. The p-value is really a probability, and I pointed to a line, but it was really the area under the curve. My mistake, and a bad mistake. However, uh, p-values are a little difficult to get out of the t-distribution table, and so what we're going to do in our work Although the computer will give us p-values, and we will be interpreting those for our CT exercise. For this problem, I'm going to show you how we arrive at the same conclusion using the te techniques that are presented in the majority of our chapter. That is, calculating a test statistic, either the z-score or the t-score, and comparing it to the limits that are defined by uh, the probability level. Okay, so let's set this up. Um, this is an example out of your book on page 331. We're looking at uh, the amount of money in people's accounts, I guess, something like that. And the, the null hypothesis is that the population mean, the average amount that people have in their accounts is $410. Okay, the alternative hypothesis is that, no, they don't have $410. They have something else, either more or less than $410. We took a sample of 18 customers, and we found that the sample mean of the dollars in their accounts was 511, which appears to be quite a bit more than 410. The standard deviation of based on those 18 samples we took was $184. And it's so important that I had to state it twice, didn't I? Yes. Okay. So, again, let's think in terms of our distribution. Uh, first of all, what type of distribution is it? Well, again, that goes back to whether we know the population standard devi deviation or if we've just calculated a sample standard deviation. In our case, we did not know the population standard deviation. We calculated it. It's S, remember population standard deviation is sigma, like that. So, because we are using sample standard de deviation, we must use the t, student's t distribution. And we're going to calculate uh, a t score for our test statistic. So here's how it looks. Oh, I know, that was supposed to be alpha is the level... Of significance we're looking for is the 0.05% level. This is what is called a two-tailed test because we have the sample equaling one thing and then we have to look at both. It uh, it fails or the, the alternative hypothesis says it's either greater than or less than. We're interested in two tails in that sort of an example as opposed to where we have say a null hypothesis that the mean is greater than or equal to $600 or something like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is based on the data we have, we're going to calculate a T statistic and we're going to compare it to what we know about our distribution. I have these kind of funny lines here and these question marks because I don't know where the T stat is going to fall yet, but we're going to compare it to the values of T that we get from our students' T table. And if it's greater than that value or less than the negative value, then we will say we will reject the null hypothesis. And we'll say, no, uh, the amount of money in their accounts is not equal to $410. We think it's something else. Okay, so let's calculate that value. How do we do that? Well, we've done calculated t before. It's equal to the sample mean minus the proposed population mean divided by what's called the standard error of the mean. Sample mean minus population mean divided by and the Standard error 
is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so let's fill in our values and see what we get for our t statistic. Let's see, x bar, our sample standard, our sample mean is 511 minus the proposed population mean. Divided by S, the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of N, which is 18. And the book tells me that that's equal to 2.34. 2.34, okay. Now, we need to find the values that we will compare that to in the student's distribution. So we have n equals 18, which means the degrees of freedom are 18 minus 1, or 17. Our alpha is 0.05, but recall we had to split that between both tails, so we're looking at alpha over 2 of 0 0.025 and from those we go to the t-distribution table in the back of our book not the very back cover but the next page in degrees of freedom 17.025 significance level and it gives us 2.11 2.11 and now I can draw a chart of what we're talking about. Can't believe it's all going to fit on here. Let's see. So we know the distribution is symmetric. So we can say that's 2.11. And there's 2.11. And again, this is... Uh, Alpha over 2, 0 0.025. I bet that fell off the paper. Yep. It's all right. Move back in a little bit. Still can't see. There we go. This is our area of accepting H0. And now we have to plop down our sample, our calculated T score of 2.34. Well, it falls somewhere. We'll just say here. 2.34. Three, four. And you can see that our calculated test statistic is greater than, is greater than our T from the T table, students T distribution table, which tells us one thing. We're not in the accept region, we are in the reject region. Reject. And so, as a conclusion, we are going to reject H0. We are going to say that no, the amount of money in people's bank accounts is not equal to $410.